guys, and welcome to the show. As you can see, it's a little bit different than it normally is. Well, unless you watch the live show. Exactly. This looks like a live show, but it's not a live show. What we're doing today is I found some of my old install videos. This particular one we're going to watch first is a Dodge Dakota. It's from about 2005 or 6. It's a lot of Rockford stuff. With all we do is go ahead and play the video, let you guys watch it, and we'll talk a little bit about what we did in the car. This is before I even knew Fernando, so this could be fun. You ready? Yeah, I was walking. Yeah, you were walking? Walking with a diaper. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right. So that was the video. Let's go back through it and let's talk a little bit about what I did in this particular car. Okay. So this intro was added after the fact. This was the original five star that when I first started here, Paul didn't have a logo. So I needed to come up with something in order to have a logo. So this was the first thing that popped in my head because at the time his original logo was just five star with five stars above it. It was really kind of like boring hotel stuff yeah so, exactly <laughs> so i didn't want to drift too far from that because i had just started here and i needed to come up with something f is kind of like a rockford r is where i stole that from Okay. And then the S is kind of like, I don't know, like a KISS style logo. The original video would have had the AVE artwork. When I left AVE, of course, I had all the material that was all mine. I, because that was yours. Yeah, because it was all mine. So I, I immediately, because I was here, closed the AVE site down and created a five-star site and then just rebranded everything. Okay. Um, because right. it was all my work anyway, so why not? All right. So what we got going on in here is in the doors, there's four... T-series six and a half inch coaxles in each door. And the bottom part of the door is a fiberglass pod. And this was funny because the, the car kept coming back and forth. Like I'd have it for a couple days and then it would leave and it'd come back. So I just made the, the template for it and then had to build the pods without the door panel. Okay. That kind of sucked. So, so you actually built that without the car? Without the car, yeah. Wow, yeah, and that fits perfect, no, no problems? Uh, well, yeah, there was. <laughs> um, what had happened was, is the seat lever was in the way when you shut the door. So right. we had to remove the seat lever so that the door would close. Wow. So there was a cable you could pull underneath the seat mm -hmm. and have the seat move up and down. Uh -oh, Not that okay. there was any room because, you know, as you get into the car, now you could see what was behind the seat. So the seats were pushed all the way back to begin with. So in the rear, across the top, is another six T-series four-inch coaxles so there's six across the top and okay. then two more left and right where the amplifiers are now the amplifiers that was a t4000 and then two t 804s i think is what they were they were the four channels okay they were the same size as the t 2001s like the one we have yep, on the board yep, over yep. here those were the four channel versions those were powering all the highs getting all that in there you had to put the 4000 in first wire it up and then the other amplifiers went in modular setting the gains on this was a nightmare okay so the amplifiers that was like how do you call they're that? stacked they like stack yeah. exactly so this first second and third yep. okay. so the the big one in in the back and then the two went in and, but what we had to do okay. is we had to get it all installed with the, with the panels off uh -huh. so we could tune it, right. pull it all back apart, put the covers in, and put the final pieces on. Wow. Because we couldn't tune it with it finished like right, that. Right, 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 so right. right. That, yeah, so we built it, listened to it, and then it had to take it all apart and yeah. put it all back together again. And then the top piece there was, that was fiberglass like the door panels. And then yeah. there's three T215s in there. So that arch... This going is what? Is fiberglass or? No, that's all wood. Okay. It's actually everything is wood except for 
uh, where the, the two fours are, mm -hmm. and then the door pods, those were fiberglass. The okay. side panels around the side where the seat belts are, those yep. are those are handmade, those were wood. And the top? Top is all wood. It's all wood. Okay. It's multi-stacked, layered. This was before everyone multi -stack. was- Multi-stack, okay, there, yeah, wow. Like, well, because now it'd be considered a stack fab, mm -hmm. but back then it was just, I needed something thick. So we built multiple layers, and then one of the back one was solid. And the funny thing was, I didn't have a flush trim bit. I cut that all with a jigsaw, and then sanded it all down. Yeah, it sucked. Wow. Okay, and then in the metal, that's a Rockford logo. That's a Rockford logo with, with, a blue, lights. with blue lights in them. Look at you. And that was sandblasted logo. So okay. I hand cut the logo mm -hmm. onto the back of the plastic and then sandblasted it. So you don't have a um, laser? We, we didn't have a laser no. and we didn't have a, uh, we didn't have any graphics. <laughs> you know, the thing was is that the owner didn't want to do anything other than what you had. You know, I had one router, I had a jigsaw, I had a panel saw, I had my table saw, I had a nail gun, I had a heat gun, glue gun. You know, he's not like the fiberglass work mm -hmm. there. You know, that dude, that's stretched grill cloth with fiberglass and a little bit of Bondo. And I had to run to Home Depot just to do that. And he was like, what are you doing, man? I was like, well, we need this piece. And he was like, oh, wow. You know, I, I didn't put that in the budget. You know, we've already worked on this too long. And it was like, you gotta be kidding me. What about right there? What are those? those what are, the, are those? Those are the, the T2, original T2 15. So there's a 315 in a ported box. Wow. It ports across the floor. It's all one piece, all individually sealed, all braced. It's an L port out the back. You know, the port would come mm -hmm. down and go forward. Cause it's three chambers. The, the hard part of the three chambers is always nailing that or screwing screwing in that center port. So all the ports, what I did was I put panels on the inside of each box. So, you know, you had the this and then there was another panel so that the ports actually came in from the top so that you could screw them in this way. And then there was 45s throughout the whole box. And it was one piece. So it was like you slid it in and then put it in place. So the box that you guys, do you guys build it outside or inside? Oh no, it's outside. So basically we built a subfloor mm -hmm. and then the box set on the subfloor. All the fasteners that were used like anytime we had to use screws to hold something together, mm -hmm. Rockford always uses those torque screws or uh -huh. the you know the Allen head screws. So everything was silver Allen head screws to match all the Rockford stuff. Not yeah. many. I didn't like seeing screws because of the way the product was designed. It was okay in my mind to show the screws because it kind of matched. Right. If there was some place clean where I could put one, I'd mm -hmm. go ahead and do it. All right, so that was the Dodge Durango. Let's go ahead and- Go we'll, to another one? Yeah, let's check out another okay. one here. Okay. So this next one was a little bit later. What had happened was we got hooked up with Melvin. He's a car concierge. For those you don't know what a car concierge is he's the guy that you hire if you're rich to get the car you want okay so what he would do is he would specialize in sports so he would get cars for the football players for the hockey players and for the baseball players okay. and they would be very specific like in this case they wanted an Austin Martin uh, they wanted a certain set of wheels and they wanted some base in it mm -hmm. so when we got the car our portion of it was to put in the subwoofer now, we never met the guy. We don't know whose car it was. We didn't know anything about that. All we knew is we had a budget and we had to do this. So we got in this DB9 and it was like, don't take up any room because he's got to fit his golf clubs in the trunk, but he wants base and that's it. Wow. And it was like, you got to be kidding me. So let's take a look at the video. So that was a quick one. Okay. 
Now, just to kind of break it down, uh -huh. all these videos were shot on either like the original iPhone, okay, you know, like the 3G, yeah, 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 yeah. or a um, I had a crappy point and shoot that shot video. You know, it was like an early version of iMovie, real simple. When I was doing the uh, kicker video, and I mm -hmm. said, "Get ready for pan tilt swirls and joys yep. of cars," because I mean, what do you do? Basically, my thought on these was I wanted a, a one-minute video that yep. kind of looked like a music. Music video like okay. I was going for the rock star yeah. thing yep yep just an advertisement because I thought that's all anyone would watch. Okay. And as it turned out, yeah. And there again, this was another AVE video that we rebranded as a five-star video when I came over here. So technically when you did all this custom stuff, that was normally an AVE. No, we actually did some here, which we'll get no, to. No, I remember. Yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. when you did something, but um, we'll do those in another all video. This, yeah. This is, this is a little bit later, so, I mean, this was probably the year after or somewhere in that range. Now, the logo there, mm -hmm. that's hand cut, that's so, a suede box. Inside that box is three 10-inch Pioneer Premier shallow mount subwoofers. Wow. And what they're doing is, in that particular car, you can kind of see where the box kind of bends towards the top. Mm -hmm. So think of this as a horn loaded almost. They were in there firing towards the gas tank, but horn loaded up through the top because there was this giant area that was open there. Mm -hmm. And then in the factory, there was like these speaker holes that were empty. It was weird. It was really weird. It was so you all... make the box port it so they can go through that. Yeah, so it, it's almost like a it's almost like a band pass. Okay. But it, it's real basic and basically it's just horn loading through the top into the car. It sounded really good. And then we powered it all with a, like a power series 500 or 700 or something like that that was buried on one of the sides. We made a, two vinyl covers that hid the amplifier so you couldn't see it. But that logo is all hand cut foam. 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 It's all hand cut foam. So what I did was I found an Austin Martin logo mm -hmm. and drew it out. Drew that all out with a straight edge and <laughs> once sat there with an X-Acto knife for an hour or two, just cut it all out, and then we laid the suede over it very carefully, because you only get one shot. Right, yeah. You get so one, you get one shot. You don't. What I did was, I took a piece of wood, yeah, and I set it over, so I could, what I would do is I'd, I'd rub my, you know, rub it all in the place, and I'd slide the wood out, do a little bit more, and then slide the wood out, do a little bit more, and then slide the wood out, do a little bit more. Because if I tried to put it all in at once, or if I tried to like hold it and do this, that wouldn't work. We only had this car for like two days. So it was like build the box, figure the whole thing out, tap in the high level, low level. We didn't use audio control. Like our owner hated audio control. So this would have been using a peripheral, which is now packed, two channel Vendetta 2. We didn't have an RTA, we didn't have DD1s, we didn't have. You know, we had digital multimeters. So that was plug it, and pray? It was plug and pray. There was no scope involved because, you know, back no. then, if the owner's not paying for it, we weren't making enough money to pay for to this pay stuff. For that. 13 years ago, that stuff, yeah, I mean, it's expensive now. It was wow, really expensive is, back then. That was neat. That was neat. All right, guys, so that's a little bit of history. There's two cars that I've done in the past. If this is something you guys like, we got a couple more. Yeah. We'd be happy to shoot them and let you guys check it out, go through. So let us know in the comments if you thought this was fun and exciting, then we'll do more. Otherwise, we'll still do more because yeah. I enjoy watching the videos <laughs> of old cars that I've done. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, you guys know what to do. Subscribe, like, share. DNF Tool Drawer, you know all about that. Yep. You guys have a great night as always. See you we'll see you later bye. next time. Bye. Again. Bye. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay. Bye. Bye, people. Bye, people.